Hey guys, so today, or a couple days ago, I picked up this Pruvio dash cam uh, over on Amazon. It's supposed to be a pretty nice dash cam. Uh, it's very highly rated. Uh, I took a look at it a little while ago. Uh, I really like it. I think it does a really good job. Um, I'll show you what's in the box here. Um, you got your two camera dash cam. Comes with uh, front and rear. So the front is actually the bottom one. Okay, that's your front cam. And then the top one is your rear cam. Uh, the rear cam actually has the infrared lights on it. Uh, the front camera does not, uh, which I thought was really interesting. I guess they assume when you're driving the lights from the other cars will illuminate you and it's going to be dark inside your car so uh, the IR lights are on the rear facing camera which is on the top um, it does not come with an SD card so I picked one up on Amazon real cheap and we'll throw that in uh, it's a 64 gig so the the amount of time that I use doing this um, I tested it for maybe an, maybe an hour, maybe an hour at most, and it recorded 3 gig of data. So a 64 gig card isn't going to really last you that long, but it does loop around and records the oldest recordings um, that are on the card. So if you do run out of space, it'll start deleting the earliest recordings that you have, unless they get locked. Now this thing has a feature on it where if it does feel an impact, if you get a G, uh, high G rated impact, if you get into an accident, it's supposed to mark that recording on the SD card and lock it and will not be overwritten, which is a pretty nice feature. Um, so that has the two dash cams on each side. We got power on button. Uh, if you hold it, uh, you can turn it off. Uh, as soon as you turn the car on and give it your 5 volts from the power supply, it automatically turns on and starts recording, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. If you want to factory default it, it has a uh, reset button there. Um, this looks like it used to do something. It doesn't really do anything. This is an accessory feature, which is an add-on you have to buy for about 13 bucks, 14 bucks on Amazon. And it keeps the unit powered on when you're in park and allows you to record um, anything while your vehicle is actually parked um, and you can put a timer on there if you want to only record for an hour after you've parked or two hours there's some settings in there that we'll go through and show you in a little bit so that's the camera itself um, both cameras move up and down and left and right so you can fine-tune it and get it adjusted how you wish to have when you are recording it does record both front and rear audio on both of them at the same time in separate streams uh, which is something that I thought was pretty interesting um, there's a little 3M adhesive pad um, what else we got in here we have our power um, let's get rid of this box so here's your suction cup holder uh, which is pretty nice this slides right onto the back of the unit pop it on slides in, suction cup that to your windshield and it'll hang there nice and easy and straight and good and it's out of the way it's not that big it's really small you can see it's a lot smaller than the size of my hand so it doesn't interrupt your view um, of the road uh, which is really nice I had no problems with it on there and then they also give you this little piece which I'm assuming is what this pad is for if you wanted to actually stick it somewhere um, I don't really like this feature I don't think it's something necessary uh, you click it on um, once you click it on there it's pretty much going to stay on there forever unless you really force it to come undone so that's something I don't think anybody would really use um, but it's there and it came with it uh, manual is pretty basic nothing really interesting in there it tells you how to insert the MSD card you should always format it after you put it in there um, you want to format it to uh, so it starts um, 
it starts clean and it writes it to the format that it wants it in, whether it wants it as NTSF or FAT32, or it's its own format. Um, the little buttons that I've gone through before, um, you can start and stop recording with this button. Um, this is your menu button. You have your microphone, so you can turn on and off the mic. If you hold it down for a couple seconds, it'll uh, stop recording the audio, but it'll still record the video. And then you can use this to switch between uh, picture and picture, just front or just rear, or have um, in the picture and picture, you can have the front be the main screen and the rear be the picture and picture, or vice versa. Uh, so that's a pretty cool feature too. I always kept it on just front facing camera because uh, I didn't want to see myself. Um, so there's the buttons I was just telling you about, inserting the memory card and formatting it. Um, the resolution of the recording, it's, uh, it is both 1080, uh, full HD, front and rear recording. There's the loop recording I was telling you about. Uh, night mode and LEDs, recording the audio. There's the G sensor I was telling you about. Um, there's the parking uh, surveillance feature, it calls it. So that's the extra accessory that you have to buy. Uh, and I'll put links to all this in the comment in my descriptions um, uh, when I post the video. Um, oh, there is a nice feature. I didn't really use this too much, but uh, there is a Wi-Fi feature. You can actually Wi-Fi your phone to the camera because when you do have this mounted and hung up uh, in your car, it kind of blocks the SD card, so it makes it pretty difficult to get it out of there. Uh, so there is a good feature. You get an app on your phone. It tells you the exact app you need to get. and you can um, pull the files right to your phone from the camera itself and you don't have to pull the SD card out and remove it from your windshield and be a big pain in the butt. Uh, so let's power this up right now. It does take, which is really interesting, it takes an old antiquated uh, mini um, USB cable instead of the new uh, USB-C or micro. Uh, which is really interesting because you can't just take a regular uh, USB cable. So let's see what we got. Power's on. And as soon as you power it on, there you go. It's recording already. Uh, it's doing the audio. Here's front and rear. Let's flip it around so you can see it's upside down. Here's the camera. Say hi. Um, remember I was telling you you can use this button to switch. between recordings so there's, that's how you switch between, it's not this one, it's the mic button when you hit the mic button it switches between picture and picture and front and rear, so we'll stay on front for now um, here's our uh, OK button, here's the recording, so if you hit that button it stops recording it tells you how much time you have left to record uh, the microphone is being muted right now uh, there's our OK button so when you are recording, you can't go into the menu screen. So once you've stopped recording, you can go into your menu. You can turn on night mode if you want it darker. Uh, we'll leave that off. Here's your uh, audio settings. Uh, if you want to record audio, yes or no. Uh, that's by default. So it'll start with the audio off, or you can start with the audio on, and then also turn it on and off by holding the microphone button. Your IR LEDs, I always set to auto. Time lapse, I never really did. Um, never really messed around with that. Here's your G sensor. So the directions say leave the G sensor in middle um, or off. Uh, it says the other two, uh, the other se uh, settings are too sensitive and it won't work out the road. There's the parking mode I was telling you about. You have to buy the extra accessory to get it. So you can have it monitor for uh, off or high or low, which is the impact. Or you can just have it monitor for 8 hours, 12 hours, or 24 hours, and then it'll automatically shut off. Uh, volume, just the volume of the buttons itself. Setting the date and time. Language, frequency, uh, 50 or 60, depending on where you are. You know, 60 in the United States. Screen saver, it tells you. So if you're driving and you don't touch any of the buttons, you know, it'll obviously shut off the screen if you don't want to see yourself. I left it at all, so it can always watch the screen. Formatting your SD card, restoring factory defaults. Here's your Wi Fi option. I was telling about if you turn on or off the Wi Fi, you can connect to it. Uh, here's the app, it tells you what app to go get. It's actually called TM Cam 
or Time Cam. When I downloaded it on my Android, it was called Time Cam, not TM Cam. Um, and then there's the Wi Fi info. It tells you your SSD and your password when you turn it on. So if we go back and turn that on. This should tell you your info once you're connected. I'm not connected now, so it won't it won't show me anything. I'll leave that off because I don't use that feature. Um, so that's all the features for the camera. Um, like I said, it's actually really good. I'm gonna have I'm gonna post in addition to this video at the end. Um, I captured a little of me driving around with the front facing camera with some audio. The, uh, it does have Sony sensors in it so the, the image quality is actually really really good that it captures. I was able to read license plates off of the videos that are recorded. Um, it's really nice. I really like it. It's pretty cheap. It was I think it was only 80 bucks. Um, it's really lightweight so it feels um, trashy but this, this really can't weigh that much. You don't want it to weigh much because when you have it suction up to your windshield it's not going to uh, fall off because it's pretty light. Um, pretty good to use. I think it has really good features. I like the front and the rear cam uh, to capture both. Um, really good buy. I think it's worth it. Uh, definitely um, check it out. Uh, links will be in the description and enjoy the video. Thanks.